Are you tired of losing at slots? Do you take all do you do you take your hard-earned money to a casino and lose it all or not come home with enough? Or do you win big, then can't get it out of the casino fast enough and again lose it all? If so, it's about time you reinvented your slots play to get a better return. Okay, maybe you don't care about losing money. For you, slots Playing slots is a hobby. Maybe that's you. Lots of folks have expensive hobbies. Some people have horses. Uh, <laughs> distractions. Uh, thank you, Chuck. Um, uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, lots, some people have horses or $10,000 bicycles. I've seen those with airfoils. They're black. It looks like somebody stole Batman's bicycle. Um, or the, maybe they have a boat to cruise, cruise around their favorite lake. I've had paid consultations with these slots enthusiasts where the only thing they don't like about spending big money playing slots is how, un is how unhappy losing makes them feel, despite, despite being you know, able to comfortably afford losing vast sums. And I do mean vast sums. Uh, so um, my paid consultations are confidential, so I won't share names, casinos, and other identifying information. But spending $10,000 during one casino visit and walking away with nothing time and again can get a bit depressing. I have nothing against them spending that much money if they want to and can afford it, but I try to help them win so they feel better afterwards. Or maybe you don't need, or you know, maybe you don't need to, uh, or particularly want to win, but instead have questions about taxes and how to handle a, a hundred W2G hand pay tax forms during every visit because each bet you make is $250. So every win is a hand pay. Hey, look, I got two cherries. That's a hand pay. I've had long conversations with slots enthusiasts spending tens of of millions on slots this year so far and not quite breaking even, falling short by a million or so, say. They thank me for my winning strategies, which allows them to win nearly as much as they spend, but now they're starting to wonder if maybe they could lose a little bit less on some days if they knew how, uh, you know, they knew how to, uh, you know, they so they come out ahead a little bit um, because it's unsettling to lose money you know, it's upsetting to lose money, even if they can afford to do so. And it can be a lot. Um, and <laughs> I'm still shocked. But in any case, um, uh, so or maybe you're going to the casino with a couple of hundred dollars and leave with nothing. Again, maybe you can afford it. At least I certainly hope so. But would rather win now that you're starting to have some success with my winning slot strategies. Before you found me, you most likely thought nobody won at slots. It's a common belief. And it's true that most people lose at slots. Otherwise, how could the casino keep the lights on? But um, you know, it's a common belief in part because slots winners keep their wins quiet, including how they are winning. But then you start what started watching. Um, maybe you started watching those YouTube slots channels out there showing so many big jackpots again and again and again. And you got the mistaken impression that they know how to win at slots by creating the illusion by editing out long losing streaks streaks from their videos. I don't mean to rip away an enjoyable illusion. If you want to live your life vicariously through their wins, please go right ahead. It's their chosen job to help you do exactly that. But that's not the same as you going to a casino and figuring out how to win at slots yourself instead of just spending money and wondering why you didn't have win after win after win like you'd seen on the internet. So let's talk about what it takes to make an effort to change your slots play from losing all the time to not losing all the time and eventually with practice learning to make a profit. But first we have a donation from Chuck. Uh, uh, as usual, he says he donates uh, uh, $20, um, 38 times now. That's what the pennies stand for um, and uh, the cents stand for. And he says, uh, good morning, all. Uh, good morning, Chuck. Uh, and we also have Magpie11, um, who... 
uh, has is, <laughs> hasn't said anything. But uh, but thank you so much, both of you, for your donation uh, to help support the show. It is very much appreciated. Thank you. Um, so let's see if I'm. Oh, uh, and I can see why Magpie Eleven uh, maybe didn't comment on the donation, but still managed to get one. Thank you. Uh, 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 Magpie Eleven is driving back from Vegas, so uh, I know they go there a lot. So it's great. Um, uh, let's go back to the top. See, we've got some hellos, and uh, and uh, I I do hope. Um, I'm not going to show you any detailed graphs. So if it gets a little bit blurry, that may happen. It is the kind of weather that I get when the internet connection is at its worst, kind of hung over, rainy, kind of uh, overcast, that sort of thing. Uh, clouds hanging over, uh, and I, I will hope for the best. Um, so let's see. Hellos, hellos, hellos. Donations, donations. Um, and uh, personal uh, stuff says you're the best. Uh, no, you're the best, personal stuff. Um, and, uh, oh, personal stuff says I made 10000 I assume, dollars with your three-hit method. I assume five spin method, um, and but maybe you got three hits. Uh, um, wonderful, uh, great! Uh, I'm so happy for you. Um, I won't even ask for a twenty dollar donation. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, I won't ask. Um, and we have Steve saying good morning. Uh, hello, John. Uh, Steve is in Green Bay, Wisconsin. As yeah, longtime fan, uh, Pam is here. Hi, Pam. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, uh Zeitz, Zeitgeistein, if I remember my German correctly, uh, uh, love your unique information. Um, I'm told that it's not a good idea to, for me to say, Hey, you won't find this information anywhere else, but you guys have told me often enough, I, kind of looked around, you know, on the internet to see if there was anybody out there kind of doing my stuff. I, I looked a little bit, you know, I certainly wanted to get whatever resources were available. And when I didn't see much of anything, I decided that somebody had to write the book. So I did. Well, <laughs> um, it turns out my audience has searched. Uh, they may, might even use the word scoured the internet for useful information. And, and that's, that's what this individual who's spent tens of millions this year is I, you're it, John, you're the only one doing this. You're the only one explaining much of anything. Um, I think he said there was something like kooks out there or whatever. I, I don't want to denigrate anybody else's attempt, but, uh, as far as useful information, I'm just, it's all right here. Um, yeah. Glad to help. I, I do like, um, I do prefer to help. Uh, if someone tells me they win $10,000 because one of my methods, I'm excited for them. Uh, my attempt is to change people's lives for the better uh, and help them uh, improve their gambling performance. <laughs> now, maybe they'll just win and spend it because that's what they want to do, but sometimes uh, they win and uh, spend it, but that's not what they intended. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, uh, where did you, well, uh, uh, Zeitgestein, um, I, my, I wrote a book called Learning to Win, and I probably shouldn't have done that first thing, but I did, because I wanted to organize my thoughts. But if you write a book of nonfiction, you usually sell it first and then write it if it gets sold, that sort of thing. So I, I did everything backwards, um, not to say, which is to say not perfectly. Um, but I learned this when I, the book is about where I learned it. So I could, you know, tell everybody it's 200 and what, 32 pages of just explaining how I, how all this, you know, I got to figure this out. Uh, but, and that's, that's what happened. As I told my mother, I'm like, well, I'm doing this. I started a business to, to do this. And she just looks at me and, and I'm like trying to struggle, you know, what am I going to do? Uh, hi, Bella. Uh, how am I going to explain this to my mother? And she's like, you figured it out, didn't you? And I'm like, yeah. So uh, it, I don't mean to make it sound trivial. It was 10 years of effort. 
2004 to 2014. Um, odd things happened in 2004, which I realized were, were just odd only in that I thought slot machines worked a certain way when in fact it was different. And that's the strategies that I'm talking about now. But it took me 10 years to uh, basically re-engineer, you know, uh, to, to uh, reverse engineer. Uh, how things work, how I had to work. And because I'm technically trained, um, you can sort of hear, see college degrees, eight of them, mostly physics and engineering, one business degree. And um, I think I have one in mathematics. So lots of statistics. So basically, uh, once I started seeing what was actually going on in the casino, it didn't match up what I thought. I heard somewhere that was how slot machines worked. Um, I it out. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, uh, so uh, there's a you have a good um, idea there, Paula. Uh, thank you, Paula, for being on uh, and uh, she has a good point. I have a website, I mean, there's a YouTube channel, but I have a website, um, and a book. Book uh, and their audio version PDF that you get with the, with the course, um, audio, soft cover, hard cover, ebook, um, uh, all from Amazon. I don't have too much choice in the uh, uh, cost uh, on Amazon, and they take most of it. <laughs> That's just how it is when you self publish. Um, uh, but uh, feel free, um, and I'll get my few dollars from uh, any sale. But that explains where all this came from. And uh, a lot of people don't realize, I have a podcast. You know, this is all the stuff that I put my time into. <laughs> Early in September, September 1st, I joined TikTok at Professor Slots. Go take a look. I've had 200,000 views, 191,000 views since since then. Um, and people tell me that's good, but I have my doubts. Uh, um, and so uh, I'm a TikToker. <laughs> I promise, no, um, no lip syncing, nothing like that. Just uh, sixty second or less, sometimes fifteen seconds or less, uh, fifteen to sixty second long videos, uh, little clips. Okay, um, thank you, Rodney. Uh, Rodney says, um, I, I, I believe you uh, recently signed up for a couple of things. Um, uh, thank you, Rodney. Uh, and uh, thank you for the donation. Um, again, it, it helps uh, keep things going. And we also have uh, um, a Susan who has, whoop, let me give you the sound. Uh, um, thank you for your donation as well, both of you, um, all four of you. Uh, it does help support the show and uh, keep things going. I was laid off last year as an aerospace engineer, which is a fairly good income, um, <laughs> which allowed me to pay my student loans and, and my mortgage. And so once I was laid off, I left off my savings for months, maybe a year, but now just getting enough to pay my bills, because, which is good because my savings were dropping. Um, uh, anyway, um, oh, uh, okay. Um, yeah, we'll take a question. Uh, uh, Diane asks, hi, John, what is the rule on tipping for a hand pay? Uh, there isn't a rule. Um, you might, I mean, we, we can talk etiquette. Uh, I can tell you what I do. Now, there's, it's kind of a debated issue. Well, did they really do anything at all when they filled out a slip of paper for you? Mm, you know, and so I like to give a minimum of $20, primarily not because of the amount, but because I have 20s. You know, when you get a hand pay, usually you can at least ask them to break 100 if you don't get a couple of 20s with the hand pay, you know, when they put it all in your hand. So that's for the convenience, for the ease, I will give the primary slot attendant uh, $20. There's also a verifier who, because they work in pairs, um, I give that person $20 and not quibble about it, whether what their job was. Um, and I do that for anything under $10,000. Uh, when it's uh, over $10,000, which I have gotten four times, three times, um, 
uh, including my $27,000 one, I, I give them a hundred dollar bill again, not exactly because of the money, you know, I'm not going to do 20% because how exactly, oh yeah, I'm, I'm already, you know, having this adrenaline problem when I'm over $10,000 hand base. Uh, and so I just make it a hundred and it's also doesn't fill up their little pouch that they keep these things in. Um, and so it's just convenient for me and for them to to 100. Now, if I were ever to go over, I tell myself, if I ever have a win over ten, a $100,000, I'd, I'd give them $1,000, um, again, for the convenience. And um, over $10,000 at my casino, and I think most casinos, the second slot attendant isn't a slot attendant. It's a floor manager. And floor managers cannot accept tips. But I have convinced my floor manager at my local casinos where I've won over ten thousand dollars to take a hundred and put it in the tip jar for the in the slot attendance break room. And so I've gotten them to take it. Um, that's 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 what I do. Um, okay. Uh, and let us get back, oh, um, so, you know, that was, that was excellent. Thank you for the donations. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, my, uh, <laughs> I, I keep on wanting to, uh, move my mouse to a different computer. It doesn't like switch. Um, so, uh, my 30 days to play slots smarter and win online course for slots enthusiasts helps you understand how to win at slot machine casino gambling. There's a lot more to winning than my slot strategies. Those are the last things you need to learn. First, you need to figure out where to play slots, access, uh, assess your available states and casinos, then learn about loss limits and preserving gains. So you have the best chance to get out of your casino with your winnings. That's something that happens. You learn to win and then you have a new experience. You won <laughs> and you don't have practice. You don't, you don't have practice on what that means. Will you be like, go crazy and just spend it? Or will you be like, uh, track shoes are on, I'm going, I'm running, I'm running out. So it's so important, no matter how much you win, uh, that you, um, that, you know, it's, you can easily end up spending it all and regretting doing so later after it's all gone. Um, along with the course, you'll get lifetime access and a free copy of my book, Learning to Win, as well as my gambling record keeping spreadsheet templates. And the bonuses keep right on coming because I, you also get a one month free membership to my new paid community, Slots Enthusiast Growth Network, where you'll get support from myself and other members as you take the course. So if you purchase 30 Days to Play Slots Smarter and Win, go check the last lesson on the introduction of the course. Uh, in the in first introductory uh, section of the course, um, uh, and it's in the last lesson there, uh, and you'll find the link to join Slots Enthusiast Growth Network with the first month free. You can also register for my online course at co online course at courses.professorslots.com. And if you haven't purchased 30 Days to Play Slots Smarter and Win, get support anyway. You can get support anyway from my Slots Enthusiast Growth Network community community without a free month by visiting community.professorslots.com. Both links are available in the video description. Now let's get back to our topic. So let's work through some of what you'll, you'd find in my 30-day course and discussions among members of Growth Network within lots of chat messages and during our weekly events, such as Q&A sessions and social hour Zoom meetings, where it's not like this live stream where you see me and if you're here live, you see the live chat, but you don't see the live chat later if you're watching it later. Um, but in the network uh, uh, that I've built uh, and you guys have joined, um, uh, it's a Zoom meeting where, you know, it's a matrix of images. Now, you don't have to use your camera. You, some people don't even have a microphone, so they have to type their chat, their news chat to ask their questions during a Q&A session, but they can see me and the rest of us. So it's a group meeting, and that's a little bit different from my talking here. Uh, so. Uh, so what, the first steps and making sure I'm all kind of like good here and didn't miss anybody. Okay, excellent. Um, 60 current, current viewers. Uh, ask your questions. I'll come back to the live chat in a moment. So what do you want? What is your gambling goal? Basically, I'm kind of going through some of the course here. If you don't have a goal, you'll never arrive at that goal, right? 
in my course, I call this section three, developing your plan. Let me show you. So this is my course. You can see across the top here, if your screen is in two small courses.professorslots.com and you can go uh, to here uh, and see my 50% off, $100 off. And that's the price right there. Um, this is what you'll learn, but there's also a course curriculum. So I can expand each one of these. Uh, so these are the nine different sections. Introduction, which you can watch the first one for free, uh, which is telling you what the, the, the goal of the course is. And if you are have paid for the course, watch, uh, go to this fourth lesson and in introduction, and there will be the special link that will get you the first month off on the paid community, which is actually community.professorslots.com. Here for the course, it's courses.professorslots.com. In any case, um, the first uh, topic here is really where the lessons begin. And uh, there's 30 days, so there's 30 days. And there's a quiz at the end of each, an easy qu quiz at the end of each um, of these sections. So a lot of this, I won't be talking, These you can see some of the bonuses here. Um, I'm not gonna be talking about the casino environment here, nor am I gonna be going over the basics. This is These two chapters are probably the most important chapters of the course, they're foundational. So today, um, and we, um, I, I'm saying all this because uh, it's a 30 days course and getting through it in a one hour live stream isn't gonna happen <laughs> because that's not how math works. Um, so uh, we'll be going through some of the topics here uh, briefly uh, on developing your plan because maybe your plan sucks a little bit <laughs> and you want, and if you need to reinvent yourself, uh, then you need to develop a better plan. You may have elements of your plan that you currently find useful, um, but, uh, uh, and you may want to keep those, but if you're not happy, something's going to change, right? Considering what, what's the definition of madness, you you go and try to do something you've done before and get the same result, but expect something else. Um, you know, it's time to adopt a change. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to develop that plan uh, here now. Okay, so uh, I don't think that's providing a lot of detail with just the gray screen, so I will uh, put that away. Um, I also want to quickly mention, I'll mention this at the end as well, uh, this is no longer a podcast. As of this live stream, this is not going, I'm not going to take this audio and I'm not going to put it into the podcast any longer. I've done that for the last 85 episodes, but on Sunday will be episode number 150. And I've decided to make some changes and I'll talk about that towards the end of the show. But uh, this, uh, I was spending... I was trying to help two different audiences at the same time to be efficient, and it's really two different audiences. So now you have my full attention. Right. So, you know, ask yourself, what do you want? That's one of the first questions I ask when developing your plan, uh, wherever it may be, paid cons consultations, of course, wherever, uh, chatting with people in the casino. What's your goal? Uh, if you don't have a goal, you won't know when you achieve your goal. So. Um, the two most important chapters are fundamental, uh, and we won't be going over those. Um, and, uh, 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 but that's those two are, you know, not not a good idea, Skip. Um, and I'll, at the end, and, and Mark, at the end of the um, show, I'll be talking about some of the other changes that are taking place, including casino reviews and frequency, and kind of. Um, I don't want to give people advance notice. <laughs> I did, I did like once or twice, and kind of like a crowd showed up and that doesn't let me do a casino review. It doesn't, um, you know, it helps those individuals, but not the 60 that are watching right now, 60, uh, uh, 59, uh, that are current, con uh, currently watching, uh, nor the thousands that are going to watch this later. I, I have to uh, remember to serve the audience, not uh, necessarily individuals. So um, uh, yeah, uh, it's on my short list, but I have to sort of prioritize and and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end. Uh, let's get to the, the, the meat of the conversation today. So in this live stream, I'm skipping those first two sections. I'm also going to be skipping section five 
slots strategies because I went over them, uh, if in far, far less detail than the course does, during a live stream a few weeks ago. Depending on how far we get today and how uh, many questions I get from the live chat, we might also get into some of section four, how to win at slots. Uh, but primarily, I'm going to be starting with a section three, developing your plan. Uh, remember, it's a 30-day course, and it can't cover it all today. So let's start off with uh, identifying your gambling goal. Uh, um, uh, uh, <laughs> right, so identifying your gambling goal. Um, there's really three big ones. Uh, my goal is actually a fourth one, and I sometimes wonder how many people do that. Uh, the, the parking lots are full of people who, whose goal is entertainment. And it kind of has to be that way because we need those people. I mean, and maybe it's you. It's it's okay. Um, certainly, we can have more than one goal. Um, uh, but hopefully, uh, you know, you 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 have another goal besides entertainment, so that um, you know you're here to learn. Uh, and uh, my goals, uh, uh, well, entertainment is uh, you know the goal of the people who basically fill the parking lots, and those are the people that. Uh, think everything is purely luck-based. They don't try to win unless they try something that is purely luck-based approaches. Um, like uh, they they were they were in Las Vegas and they played a, a particular slot machine, Lightning Links, and now they think anywhere in the country, uh, Lightning Le Leaks Links has better odds which is just like, well, then you, now you're back to randomly picking a slot machine, not the ones on the end of the row, not the ones that are kind of pointed at a busy area. You're just randomly selecting whatever slot machine leaps in front of you, and then you have the average response, which is less than 100%. And that's how the lots and lots and lots of people pay rather large electricity bills <laughs> for casinos, and we need them. We want to ha always have them. Otherwise, um, you know, casinos start having financial problems. So uh, I guess that's going to be a cap on my audience. Um, but if your goal is entertainment, great. But maybe your goal is to make money, in which case uh, you can't take the random approach uh, to uh, randomly picking slot machines, even if you think you're trying to do something like only play certain games, that's still randomly picking slot machines because it's not effective as we go over in the course or as I go over in the course. So, um, but maybe you, you do hear some of the things I, you know, um, uh, who was it that said, um, uh, someone earlier said, uh, you know, they won $10,000. Great, with one of my methods. Great, I'm happy for them. But um, would they have won that if they hadn't been using my method? You know, so there's there's winning, and then there's, uh, uh, um, you know, choosing your goal. But some people, you know, they don't need the money. We've talked a little bit about those people, and but they, they love the comps. Uh, uh, this individual that I was telling you about before, you know, he's number one in his casino. Uh, they they treat him like a rock star is his words, and that's great. You know he 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 was looking for entertainment, and by golly he found it. Uh, and uh, what the, whatever his imagination would allow, he would ask for and, and usually get. So, you know, entertainment is fine. But then you start getting to the point where you're like you know make money. <clears throat> and you can make money, but then you can, so you, it's not all losses. You spend what you win and you keep gambling records so you don't get messed up with taxes, but then you're not making a profit. You're just like, it's a wash. And a lot of people have that. Um, and, but then there's, uh, you know, winning. And, and so if you're trying to go from uh, always losing or always breaking even, but you want to come home with a profit, then this is uh, monetary profit, then this is where you're at. Now you can also come home with a profit by every time you get a hand pay, if you get hand pays, I know a lot of people still wish they could get a hand pay, but some people do. And when you get those, you can give a little bit to, I shouldn't say give, pay a little bit in federal taxes, federal income taxes, 5%. And if you keep gambling records, like I offer 
free in the course or sell on my website, you can, it's very cheap. Uh, uh, and maybe it helps you if you don't know how to use a spreadsheet. But um, if you uh, um, keep those records as the IRS wants you to, and I've had live streams about this as well and have website articles and et cetera. But if you keep those records, then you don't have an additional bill. And if you add, you know, give money to the federal government, they'll give it back in a tax refund. Of course, you will need to itemize your deductions and not take the standard de deductions and, and all of that. But that's if that's already part of your life, then you can uh, stop not uh, having them withdraw a small amount of money in your federal taxes. And that becomes a savings account with the federal government, which you can only withdraw on once a year <laughs> when you prepare your taxes. Uh, just a suggestion. It's, a, it's what I call my draconian method of getting out of the casino with money. You, you give it to the government until you get your tax return. Uh, if you're in a situation where you would get it back because you've itemized your deductions uh, and they have a police force, they have, they have military forces of the air and the sea and the space and, um, uh, and, and they will be sure not to give it to you until the time is right. Uh, that's, that's my draconian method to get money out of the casino eventually, but you can also use gamble boxes like I have right there on top of those books. Um, and some other things. They only hold about 13, 13 bills. No, I think it's, is it 13 bills or 130 bills? And if they're all hundreds, then that's how much you can put in there. I think it's 13 bills. Um, sometimes they get jammed before that. So, and then the another one, another gambling goal is to earn comps. Um, if you love food, travel, uh, cruises, you know, you can try to build up your tier levels until you, um, you know, start getting free play and some other things, um, you know, weekly, a couple times a week, $250, uh, and you start using that. And a lot of people enjoy that. Um, I wasn't really much for like, I, I have work to do. I can't really travel. And um, thanks for the free play, I guess. And, you know, I, I enjoyed that. And <laughs> I had a, my share of 45 day age steaks that cost like 50 bucks each. Um, uh, and so there, there were comps that I did enjoy. But my mine was kind of like um, my gambling goal is actually not as common, which is I want to know how all this stuff works. And I have figured out how a lot of the stuff works. There's a lot of stuff going over and we see changes every year. Those Virginia casinos, you know, will open, open soon. And um, they already have the one in North Carolina that hasn't opened their main facility. They basically have a trailer. <laughs> it's a little bigger than that, but that's how people have described it, where apparently the five pole method works. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, this is, this is my learning is to share with you. Uh, and so, um, you know, things change in the gaming industry over time. And I did think about today's topic might be to um, talk about how if you play video poker in Nevada, it's different from playing video poker in any other state because of the gaming regulations. They have a very strict, very short, very clear statement, uh, gaming regulation, which says, this has the odds of the equivalent hand, the card game. And there's more than one game of poker, so there's more than one set of gaming uh, probabilities. But whatever the game is, bonus, bonus, jacks are better, each of those is a mathematical probability set for each of the hands, and the game must match what happens with the cards. Um, I haven't found another state that has that gaming regulation. So if you want to use my slot strategies on video poker, don't bother in Nevada. But North Carolina, there's nothing in the rules about, about it having to be the game of poker. It's a slot machine. Of course, it has the rules of poker, but not the probabilities. So you can find good times to play them and find bad times to play them and Play the ones on the end of the row and those with a view and all that works, but not in Nevada. All right. So um, that's sort of how things are different from state to state, including Washington, the state of Washington, which I've had a separate live stream on, very popular uh, to people in Washington, which is great, state of Washington. 
uh, you know, so these these goals are you know, defined so much about what you need to learn um, and what you need to do and study and practice to get better and with with practice no longer lose as much uh, and maybe even nudge yourself into not paying the casino's electric bill anymore by always making a profit or mostly um so another thing you'll need to do um and i want to make sure i haven't missed too much in the live chat um there's a few questions <laughs> there's a few questions uh which i will uh, get to in a moment but to find, find a good time to take a break um so after identifying your gambling goals topic of the course uh and i go more into it there for uh but uh, assessing casinos and more in the kind of point by point but there's assessing casinos and how do you even do that um do you even have any uh, i uh, i i i have casino reviews coming up there's maybe 50 casinos within 100 miles you know if you put me on a map uh dayton ohio and circle it with 50 mile uh, radius so it's 100 miles across uh there's 50 casinos and so i'm going to start doing uh weekly casino reviews of those that are in a drivable distance but um i'm hoping monthly i'll be able to fly because that's not really drivable to go to atlantic city or to go to alabama uh 600 miles um I'm really kind of edge of what i'm comfortable doing driving to alabama and then driving back from alabama in a single day um it's probably just outside of my range i do have my dog my puppy isaac who's doing great by the way uh in daycare uh or as they call it puppy kindergarten uh and uh, uh you know i have to get back in time to pick them up before they close so so um i have to stay within a certain range probably about 50 miles from where i'm sitting and there's a bunch of casinos there and i'll do a bunch of those uh i did earlier this week um uh miami valley gaming which is uh between dayton and cincinnati uh and that review is available for you as a video and as an article and um then there's also and i probably talk about it in the podcast when it comes out uh so it'll show up on youtube that way as well uh and i'm thinking maybe indiana next time instead of doing another ohio casino maybe one of the riverboat casinos uh on the eastern border of uh um Indiana. And that's uh, my tentative plan for, oh my goodness, tomorrow. <laughs> Gotta get ready. Gotta get ready. Uh, um, which I'll start doing after this live stream. So assessing your casinos means understanding what's around you. Uh, I have all these casinos uh, fairly close together, not exactly convenient um, for like, you know, just popping by. Uh, but then, you know, there's people who are near Hard Rock, Tampa in Florida and that's it and believe you me the casino knows that you don't have any easy choices that's that's the only casino so they can treat you terribly and what you're going to do what you're going to do about it and and so you know they have to be treat you pretty bad for you to say i'm swearing off gambling but if you're in and i have uh i was interviewed um by the abc evening news in harrisburg pennsylvania you can find this art uh this uh, evening news segment investigative reporting on uh at professorslots.com slash abc27 and if you go watch that it's about eight minutes long um and if you go watch that you'll see how penn national outside of harrisburg which is all alone uh, has kept its odds low um, compare, compared to other casinos in the state because Pennsylvania has returns, monthly return statistics uh, by casinos and by casino. And so the ones up in Philadelphia all competed with one another for the attention of those uh, players. But down in Harrisburg, they only had Penn National, the one. And so you can see the difference in the odds. So when I talk about assessing casinos, that's a sort of situation. Maybe you only have one uh and that's it but you might under you would understand better what that casino is doing how it recognizes that and 
kind of using that against you. At least you understand what's happening. And maybe you save your money and go to a Las Vegas strip or something and use a five pool method, which apparently works at every casino in the strip, uh, not so much downtown. Uh, and, um, you know, you can decide to penalize the local casino for doing that to you and save your money and take a trip once a year, a couple of times a year instead. Um, but so assessing casinos, whether or not there's just one, whether or not it's not convenient to get to, whether or not there's many, and then how do you assess which one to go to? Um, if you're near the border uh, of Illinois and Indiana, there's a river, uh, Platte River, I think it is, and there's cas riverboat casinos on one side, on the Indi uh, Illinois side, and there's riverboat casinos in the Indi Indiana side, and they have different gaming regulations because it's different states, and it's like a war going on. Not to mention Foxwoods and Mohegan in Connecticut battling it out with uh, Massachusetts. Uh, Mohegan Sun and Foxwoods battled it out together against each other, it, it drove Foxwoods to at one point being number two in the nation, in the world, as far as uh, ca casino size. They, they've fallen behind. They haven't really, they kind of fallen behind um, because they're kind of closing a little thing, a few things down. But uh, other casinos have been put in place like Windstar to now be the number one casino. Um, but man, when MGM Springfield up in Massachusetts was decided upon and came in and they built downtown Springfield and then they, they opened, they never knew what hit them. I, I think it was they, the G general manager was in serious trouble real fast. And I don't, I don't think he was able to stay past the year because man, just Mohegan sun and Foxwoods just competed the heck out of them. And if you're anywhere near that region, if you go to those casinos, part of assessing casinos to understand it's an economy, you know, is it a new market? Is it a mature market? And so these things, you know, we could go on about, uh, and, um, Sometimes, you know, I haven't looked at every combination. Uh, I sort of have. I haven't talked about every combination, like Illinois and Indiana, border war, <laughs> Connecticut, Massachusetts, and what Maryland is trying to do to uh, Massachusetts on that side of things. Um, but often these will come up in uh, paid consultations uh, where we could talk about your particular cir circumstance. So somebody was asking me if I was going to go to Atlantic City. Um, sure. Uh, it's certainly, I've been to Las Vegas and I get a lot of reports from Las Vegas for more than I would be going. I was usually an annual trip for me. Uh, and I suppose I should start doing that with Atlantic City, but I really want to get to Hard Rock Tampa because it's such an isolated uh, casino. I want to see, I want to go to the most isolated, largest yet most isolated casino and learn a little bit about how terrible those can be and, and see if there's a way I can kind of break them uh, to, to figure out the counter strategy to their strategy to get money from slots players. So I have my particular, you know, fly there interest, and then I have a bunch of them near me and I'm trying to kind of mix it up uh, so that it, uh, you know, it's not like I'm uh, trying to go down the river and do each riverboat casino because that sounds like it might be a little boring for you. Um, but if, you know, to help people assess casinos. Now, as when I talk about these assessments of your casinos, it really has to be redone every time the casino's bought. And sometimes you don't know if it's been bought. So how do you find out if it has been bought and if it's tribal, it hasn't been bought, but maybe they built an addition. So there's things you watch for to see is an assessment, a reassessment required? And we talk about that, uh, including if they've had a renovation or, you know, and, and by default once a year minimum. And now we've had this whole pandemic thing. So <laughs> multiple assessments in the last year as things go. Um, I'm going to take a few questions here. Uh, and I, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the uh, 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 gaming regulations and what you can get from the uh, players clubs bankroll, sort of following the course topics. Um, let's see uh, a bunch of questions. Um, yes, I, I plan to come to Atlantic City, uh, Mark. Uh, that is my intention um, right now because I've, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, uh, certainly I didn't want to die before getting vaccinated. And now that I'm vaccinated, I don't want to have to take like two weeks off because I get a Delta variant. And so I'm trying to be both careful and encouraging myself to go. So I decided finally to, instead of going monthly, uh, to now 
go weekly and uh, hopefully I'll be able to maintain that. If I get sick, then, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. And I have a compromised immune system, so I will likely be down for two weeks or something like that. But so far, so good. So, <clears throat> yes, I do plan. Uh, and uh, Magpie, 11 degrees, uh, setting gambling goals before they hit the casino is the single most important action you can take to set yourself up for success. Uh, Magpie uh, has taken the course, right? And one of the points that I make that I didn't make just now was what's your goal for the trip? You can have more than one goal, but maybe you have one goal for the morning, one goal for the afternoon, and a third goal for the evening. And so that maybe you figure out what approach works best for those days. And then on your second day, you just do that one. So choose what your intent is. So, you know, develop your plan and know what it is that you want to try. And maybe you just do, you know, if you get good at my strategies, you can do like one in a couple hours. And so you can probably get through several of them and see which one works at not every strategy works at every casino because not every casino has the important business practice that is the counter, which I built the, the uh, um, uh, strategies to counteract. So um, if you're assessing casinos, then you need to figure that stuff out. And then, so <laughs> an important detail. Thank you, Magpie. Uh, Autumn Star says, um, this guy is cool. He knows what's up. Uh, thank you. Uh, people are talking about, um, so many people like to have a slots channel and they seem to think that's, the end all and be all of, of having, you know, explaining stuff. And they, they send me these not well thought out emails about, you know, I'm not going to believe a thing, single thing you say, unless you, uh, you know, do a video of your playing. And I'm like, uh, you want me to do a video of my sitting at my computer at home, figuring out which is the best casino I should go to. No. Oh, you want to know after I found the casino, and after I, I found the slot machines in that casino, uh, the candidate winning slot machines, and then I, I play them. You don't want me to show you how to get there <laughs> and do that, but you want me to play them. And how would you know if I wasn't editing out large losing sections? Because you can't see it on the other slots channels, so... No, I don't think I'm going to follow everybody. I think I'm going to lead everybody. Thanks anyway. So, um, uh, but thank you, uh, uh, Autumn. Uh, Janet, what is the best way to use free play? Let's say $100. Uh, do you do five spin method or all in one machine? Um, there is no best way. This is like if you brought $100 to the casino, what's the best way to spend it? Free play is identical to putting cash in or putting a voucher of that amount in. Uh, so you're asking me, if you take $100 to the casino, how do you spend it? Well, uh, actually, it's very hard. It used to be you could take a roll of quarters back when we could use coins and make penny bets, make quarter bets. But these days you can't. The minimum bet has been increased to what? 30 cents. I was doing 50 cents on penny machines. That's about as low as I found it. I found 68 cents and 88 cent minimum bets uh, up in um, Soaring Eagle. But this last weekend at Miami Valley Gaming, it was 50 cents. And so, you know, that's 200 bets on $100. That's two penny machines. You know, I talk about doing 100 bets on a slot machine. First, you go do 10 and another 10. And then if all that's going great and 50, and then if that's going great, you do 100 bets. <clears throat> and then you decide if you're going to stay. That's, you know, if you don't win anything, uh, you know, that's, that's only a few games to play. So you can either go for it with the five spin method, um, learn if your casino has it with one of your trips with $100. And then after that, that's what you do. 
Now, if it doesn't work, then you've invested your money on doing that. And now you need to find, use one of my other strategies, a day after a holiday, a day after a busy day, um, a busy night, morning, early morning after a busy night, early morning after a holiday where they celebrated it. Um, you know, you can do the uh, uh, environment, listen for it when it gets busy. If it's not that more people came in, it's that the casino has dropped the uh, approved the ads for you. Or the whole walking around and look, strategy nine, location, location, location. But $100 is not a lot to work with, whether it's free, free play or not. Um, invest it in figuring out which strategy works so that the next $100 can be spent wisely. Or on another strategy to see if that one works if the first one didn't. Start with five spin. Make sure you check slot machines that other people win on. Walk around the casino, find the biggest intersection. I don't mean to go on about this. Most slot machines are in every casino. Are they tied to each other? Um, they're tied to a central computer, except in riverboat casinos. Like, unless you are more specific on your question, but that answers your question. Um, Oh, more, more specific question from the same person from Rose. I've noticed that if someone inserts a big ticket into a slot machine, they tend to get big spins and pay as opposed to inserting a smaller amount on ticket. Um, this could be because they're making bigger bets. And it's not that the odds are better with bigger bets. It's that it's more likely to be a bigger amount, right? Uh, my customer on the paid consultation was making $250 bets every win. Hey, I got two, I got two cherries, you know, hand pay. So that's why it seems that way. Now, um, also be aware that you can cancel the roll up. And so you can make it seem as though you didn't win almost as like a half a chime. If you are fast enough on pres pressing a button, uh, press the pressing the button. If the during a roll-up, we'll cancel the roll-up, not make another bet. Uh, but if the roll-up is finished, then you're making another bet. Uh, and so you, there's an illusion there um, that you have to kind of like really watch for. Um, now, on the other hand, there is possible that you found a winning strategy at your casino, but in general, it's not true. Um, I've seen some pretty sketchy casinos where, you know, it's not against the law, I checked, would they be doing that? But it's also not worth that for them unless it's my friend, the tens of millions of dollars per year top casino gambler. For them, they might, for that individual, the casino might do something. But as a regular practice for anybody, no, that's just all kinds of trouble for them. And how do you even do the accounting on that? Uh, eight minutes left. Um, Ed uh, Magpie says, uh, Bellagio, Cromwell, Aria, and Park MGM in the Las Vegas. That's all in the Las Vegas Strip, I think. Um, they had a great morning session with the five pool method. Yeah, I've been, I'm hearing every casino on the Strip uh, uses it. Um, I, first, one of the uh, I I've been getting individual reports, and I was reporting out. Uh, you know, somebody said Venetian, and somebody said this, and somebody said that. But then somebody contacted me and said. Um, you know, the group of us on my Nevada slots enthusiast community just wanted to collectively say thank you <laughs> because we're all doing great and like a good, good, good slots enthusiast quietly, I'm not telling anybody, but we're going to tell you thank you. Um, again, I'm going to try to make this joke. It, I don't want you to, to do it. It, it helps me, but you know, you, you you win ten thousand dollars. You think about a twenty dollar tip, would you? I, I mentioned this to the gentleman who uh, was doing the uh, tens of millions per year, and I'm like, twenty dollar tip, kill you. So he's, I guess he might do that. Might do that. I, I, I'm going to laugh my butt off if he does because thank you for the twenty dollar tip. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, <laughs> Bella, the gambling enthusiast, says, I would love to meet you at the Hard Rock Tampa. I'm not doing crowds. I work best on figuring out stuff for you if I'm by myself. I mentioned something about maybe taking a trip to, to Windstar and some month this year or next year, and suddenly I'm fending off all these people who are like, I'll be quiet. I'll just, I'll, it would be like Forrest Gump. 
you know, where he's running through the desert in Monument Valley, and there's like a group of people like 50 feet behind him, <laughs> just running too. You know, I'm just kind of getting people watching me um so uh i will do my best um uh to help you uh, all of you uh by making videos and doing uh articles um i may might someday try to convince the casino uh get them to pay me uh to come in and do uh, uh speaking presentations uh, paid presentations and you know have a table in the back with paula selling my book <laughs> oh paula did i mention it bring your camera i'll need a shot uh but that that's a someday sort of thing and with uh i can reach a lot more people with a video than i can by you know, going to a casino um, but i appreciate how you would like to do that um uh, vt boys 1220 my casino just changed its name and are building a hotel now that's two different activities it didn't just change its name i believe how this works is they put up the signs with the new name six months after the name changed but you would only know the name changed because they have to order all the promotional materials get the logo and put everything together it takes about six months to get those big signs put up but if you got a hand pay when did the name change on the hand pay and I've, I've seen that and been completely startled. Horseshoe Cincinnati was suddenly Red Rock or something. And I was just like, it wasn't yesterday. Because you, casinos tell the government first. And at, on, on the day of. And so, you know, I, I read an announcement a week, you know, a month later about maybe that was happening. And then um, uh, six months later, the signs went up. So uh, it's been a, probably been a little while unless you actually did get, did get a hand pay. And that's how you noticed it. Ooh, um, uh, Bella, the gambling enthusiast. I tried the five pull method at Seminole casinos here in Florida and don't think it works. I tried it at Seminole Brighton, um, but, uh, for my father <laughs> kind of early on, and I have an article about that. Uh, and I, and we found that it worked, um, actually, uh, Lois and Dave, uh, Tisdale, uh, who are on the live chat, were there for that. And there's even um, uh, some, pit, uh, I don't think I used their pictures, but uh, we did find that it worked. Um, that was a couple of years ago, and everything has to be reassessed yearly. So uh, Seminole Brighton did seem to have it. What I wanted to do was, um, I didn't realize at the time, but I should have, once I realized it worked, I was only there for three hours, um, and uh, uh, was to try it in the high limit room. Um, but that's, that's one of the places I want to go back to uh, when I do the Hard Rock because um, it's my father's favorite casino and might as well check it out every couple of years. Whew. Um, yeah, uh, five pole method works in one in four casinos uh, is what I'm finding, uh, except for the strip, which seems they have all come together. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, uh, and you're also asking about the volume, and that's uh, that's actually a, a hack. Um, I shouldn't say hack. That's a that's a hoax, um, uh, and um, it's by someone who said it's a hoax, and people enjoy it. You know, uh, yeah, don't drink while gambling. Hey, there you go. <laughs> now, uh, thanks, uh, Chai uh, Tao. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you want to win? That's one of the things to watch out for. Absolutely. Um, uh, I'm kind of, there's a bunch more kind of thoughts and questions. I don't, um, I want to make sure I check for all of the people who are part of my membership. Um, uh, yeah. And uh, so I wanted to, um, uh, I guess I'll cover the topics I wanted to cover. Uh, thanks to thanks to those of you who already signed up for my 30 day to play slots smarter and win online course available at courses.professorslots.com. Along with the course, you'll get lifetime access plus other valuable bonuses. You'll also find the link in the video description. Also, a month ago, I launched my support community, the Slots Enthusiast Growth Network. If you're in the course, that's a special link. There's a special link for you in the last session, uh, lesson of the introduction section, which gives you one month free access to support to help you through the course. If you're not a course a participant, you can still join by visiting community.professorslots.com. It's all about getting support, help, and accountability, along with exclusive Q&A sessions, tips, feedback, and more. Join us. So let's... Um, 
So otherwise, please be aware that I'm making changes to my YouTube channel. So basically announcements here. Um, or should I, just so you are aware, not too upset or shocked, um, change happens. Change is a constant. So I should say I'm starting to do those things I promised I would do, as well as other improvements, improvements which seem the right thing to do. For instance, you're already seeing 60 second or less daily shorts, a new feature TikTok has created to help them compete with TikTok. Also, I've started weekly casino reviews where I visit a casino on Sundays and then record my review in my car shortly after leaving the casino. Those videos should get posted the next day on Mondays. On Wednesdays will be my state-by-state -state videos, which I've decided to change up the format on, be a little bit more informal uh, in those videos, hopefully make them more successful or entertaining um, and, and hopefully I'll be able to get that out I'll figure it out by next Wednesday. Uh, it, it's uh, a lot of changes coming. On Friday will be a new article on my website with its own video here on YouTube also posted on that Friday. Uh, I've been trying to do those around six o'clock at night so they don't interfere with the noon uh, shorts that are coming out every day. Um, but I've got a bunch of those articles lined up. On Saturdays, we will have this live stream, but YouTube takes their time processing it. So if you don't wanna watch it live, if you can't watch it live, it doesn't get spread globally until early Sunday morning. Um, on late Sunday will be a new video, which is another whole completely new thing, which is my podcast as a video. I haven't been doing that. I haven't been um, uploading my podcast audio to YouTube as a video, which would just have the static image of my thumbnail. So that's something I could have done. Uh, and actually many years ago on a different YouTube channel, I did try that. Um, I'm going to be doing that from now on. And I'm trying to decide if I do all the past ones too. So it's something kind of like a business decision. So I'm, um, I've been, as I told you earlier, I've been combining you and the podcast audience, these two audiences and kind of doing like for efficiency, one, one thing, but really you each need to have your own show. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing. I won't be including this audio into from my live streams into my podcast episodes anymore. I've done that for the last 85 episodes, but next episode number podcast episode number 150 will be posted on YouTube with a static image, but contain the full audio of that show, uh, which could be on a different topic, uh, which will be a, probably be a different topic, certainly um, uh, putting that together now. So you, but you, of course, will still be able to get to my pod, Professor Sots podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. So those are the known changes. Daily shorts, casino reviews on Mondays, state reviews on Wednesdays, a brand new video on Fridays, live streams on Saturdays, and a podcast video on Sundays. I am tired already. <laughs> so now maybe you want to know what's my five spin winning slot strategy in this playlist right here. I explain what it is, how to test if your casino has it, plus a bonus video to help you improve your return if your casino has chosen to use it to manipulate you to waste your bankroll. Instead of falling for it, learn to collect those tastes. So click this playlist right here, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.